Almost as quickly as the horseless carriage became a thing, and people marvelled at the ingenuity of a carriage that could propel itself down the road without a horse pulling it, we humans have dreamt of a day where the humble automobile was not only capable of moving forward under its own power, but capable of driving itself too. From the Futurama exhibit at the 1939 World's Fair nearly 84 years ago, through to the self-driving concept rocket cars of the 1950s, and the various quote-unquote academic research vehicles from major institutions over the years, we humans have been searching for ways to seed control of our vehicles to machines for several generations. In today's modern world of mass-produced 5 nanometer computer chips, 2 nanometer are on the way, artificial neural nets and always-on internet connectivity, fully autonomous vehicle operation is closer today than it's ever been. And for years, many people have believed that, that one company, Tesla, would be the company to dominate the autonomous vehicle market. And that's not without good reason. Tesla has been promising us a full self-driving or something similar in its range of electric cars now for nearly a decade. Its FSD beta program, which has now covered millions upon millions of miles, is being tested by hundreds of thousands of Tesla owners every single day. But Tesla hasn't yet gone through the regulatory hurdles required for it to flip the switch and make its full self-driving an out-of-beta feature, a feature that can be turned on in every single Tesla to make them robo-taxis, something that can make money for their owners when not in use and make more efficient use of resources. There are many who believed that Tesla would be the first to bring widespread autonomous vehicles to the world's roads. Sure, there are already fleets of autonomous robot taxis operating in select cities around the world. In parts of Arizona, for example, you can hail a fully autonomous Waymo robo-taxi to take you places within a carefully geofenced set of zip codes. You can buy any number of vehicles today, of course, with level two semi-autonomous driving capabilities. These cars will combine automatic lane keep assist, pre-collision braking and radar assisted cruise control and sometimes even lane change assistance into a feature that will basically drive for you, but one which requires you to remain alert and ready to take over at all times. Those systems, which include Tesla's current generation of autopilot and full self-driving beta, as well as Ford Blue Cruise, Nissan Pro Pilot, GM Super Cruise, and many, many more, trade off some of the monotony of manual driving on the freeway with semi-autonomous functions. As long as you either keep hold of the wheel at all times or keep your eyes focused on the road ahead. Take your eyes off the road or let your attention wander, either by removing your hands from the wheel when you're not meant to, or looking away from what's in front of you for too long, and the system will loudly protest to grab your attention and get you back onto the task at hand. Driving. They may be smart, but legally and practically, these level two systems aren't letting you switch off and turn away. Except now, if you buy an EV from one company and you happen to live in a lucky few US states, you'll now be able to get the car to drive itself on select highways. You'll be able to get the car to do all of the legwork and not only take your hands off the wheel, but your eyes off the road as well. This is the dream that many people have been wanting to become reality. But it isn't Tesla bringing this feature to market. It's Mercedes-Benz. At CES last week, Mercedes-Benz quietly announced it had completed all the necessary validation required to gain permission from the state of Nevada to switch on its drive pilot system in the state. On certain roads, this means that owners of the Mercedes-Benz EQS and its sibling, the gasoline-powered Mercedes-Benz S-Class, will be able to hand over the task of driving to their car's onboard computer system and turn their attention elsewhere. Only when the car requests 
requests that they take over will they be required to stop whatever they are doing and take control again. California isn't far behind either, with California expected to adopt the same system as Nevada very soon. This, by association, makes Mercedes-Benz's Drive Pilot a Level 3 autonomous vehicle system under the Society of Automotive Engineers J3016 standard. It's the first automaker to receive permission to offer Level 3 functionality in North America, and it does leapfrog Mercedes-Benz ahead of Tesla in the race for robo-taxi status. But before we get ahead of ourselves, I feel now is a great time to tell you about the SAE autonomous vehicle levels and then when we know why Mercedes-Benz system is level 3 and Tesla's FSD is still technically level 2, I'll detail the big kicker into the teeth of Mercedes-Benz's system that will give it pretty limited real-world functionality. I hope you're ready for this chat though, because wow, is it exciting. I cannot wait to show it to you because I just know that you are going to. Oh boy, that's a lot of text. Okay, so I lied. The SAE J3016 levels of driving automation is, like most SAE standards, a bit dry for the layperson. It has to be. It is fundamentally a standard specification after all, and a standard is only as good as the engineers who put aside their differences and agree on whatever the standard should be. Sitting round a fire, singing Kumbaya. Sorry, I guess I'm being a little too sarcastic here, even <laughs> for this channel's standard, but Simply put, the SAE standards for autonomous vehicle operation go from level zero, which covers vehicle features like automatic emergency braking, blind spot warning, or lane departure warning, all of which have been offered as pretty standard fit features on most vehicles for some time, all the way through to your standard issue Johnny Cab. But hopefully without the clueless robotic operator up front. Please repeat the destination. Oh, anywhere, just go, go! Oh, Doctor, the work you had to do before saving the crew of the Voyager multiple times over. Wonderful. Out of the icebox and into the fire. I'm not going to go through the entire list of what makes each SAE level that particular SAE level, but what's important to note, and what you can hopefully easily see from this graph as provided by SAE International, is the fact that for levels 0 through 2, the meat sack behind the steering wheel is considered the driver of the vehicle even if they're not steering or if they have their feet off the pedals. Ford's Blue Cruise, Tesla's Autopilot, Comma AI and GM Supercruise are, for example, all level two because you are required to constantly supervise the vehicle's operation, intervening if things get out of hand. Having driven with all of these systems, I can attest that manual override is required usually at some point. And having talked to those who own Teslas with FSD beta active, that seems to also be the case for now with FSD beta, even if, on occasion, the car drives itself from point to point with no intervention. Basically, using any of those systems is a little like having to take a teenager out and teach them to drive. They may become more competent with time, but they're usually not ready to drive on their own yet. Levels three through five hand switch that all around. Instead of you being required to monitor the car, it does the driving for you in increasingly complex ways. Level five is full, the car is driving and you may not even have manual controls. Whereas level four is the first level at which the car can operate completely autonomously with nobody in the vehicle or behind the wheel. Level three, well, it's a bit of a crossover point. While technically under SAE level three requirements, the person in the driver's seat is not considered the driver if they are not actively in the act of driving, say at the time of a accident, which brings up some really interesting things for vehicle liability. Autonomous operation will only take place if predetermined conditions are met, such as being on a road that's been mapped exclusively for the service. Additionally, when the vehicle requests that you take over with level three, 
you have to take over. And while level 2's, hey, please take hold of the wheel or pay attention to warnings are pretty immediate, I'm led to believe that level 3 tries to give the driver as much time to stop what they're doing and take over as possible. Since level 4 will operate on its own, if there's a situation it can't handle, it'll just find somewhere safe to stop and twiddle its metaphorical thumbs, or phone home and ask to be picked up because it's lost and it wants its mummy. Okay, I did, I did kind of make that last bit up. Somewhat. For the purposes of this video, what makes Tesla's FSD bait at level 2 and Mercedes-Benz's system level 3 is the fact that, while Tesla still requires you to remain vigilant and in control, Benz's system lets you completely forget about driving up to the point at which it then asks you to take control again. And here's the crux of the problem with these SAE definitions. While Tesla's FSD beta is very good at creating the impression it can operate fully autonomously with zero input on a wider range of roads, although there are plenty of videos showing it screwing up like a learner driver, I'd argue it is a far more practical system to use in everyday life as a driving aid when compared to Mercedes-Benz's level 3 system. Why is that? Well, right now, for launch at least, Benz's system is extremely limited. Not only do you need to be on a road that is properly mapped for the service to work, but it only operates at speeds below 60 kilometers per hour. That's 37 miles per hour. In other words, it's good at taking over the driving in heavy stop and go traffic in a rush hour on the freeway, or maybe taking over the driving on specific roads in urban areas. But elsewhere, where the speeds travelled are much higher, you're going to be doing the majority of the driving, or the car will default back to level 2 operation. Which brings me to the disingenuous nature of the promises made of full self-driving by Tesla and Mercedes-Benz's system, DrivePilot. And by the way, it's really to every single level 2 and level 3 semi-autonomous system out there now and promised for the future. Right now, the average car buyer doesn't know anything about SAE levels of autonomous driving. Why should they? I mean, your average consumer also doesn't know that Thunderbolt 4 and USB-C have the same physical connectors, but that's about where the similarities end. Yet they probably use both interchangeably every time they use a computer. Although sometimes they might get confused as to why one peripheral works while another doesn't. The difference between not understanding USB and Thunderbolt's different technical specs under the hood won't get you into trouble with the police or potentially cause an accident. Yet misunderstanding where and when these various autonomous vehicle systems will and won't operate, well, that could be the difference between you watching a lovely TV show on your way to the office in your fancy self-driving car or explaining to the police why your car suddenly phantom braked and you weren't ready to take over control. So yes, on paper at least, and under very limited operating conditions that Mercedes-Benz will up to a higher maximum speed limit as soon as it has all the necessary permissions to do so, the Mercedes-Benz S-Class and EQS will be able to drive themselves on some roads in some conditions, letting you take your eyes fully off the road, your hands fully off the wheel, and pay attention to something else rather than drive. Just like how all those level 2 systems I shared can do a passable job though, most of the time, of being in the uncanny valley of driving where you'd swear a human was doing the legwork, there are issues. Because that vision of the future, of having the car do all the driving for you all the time, that is unfortunately still out of reach for most people. And it will remain that way until legislators, automakers and safety groups, not to mention insurance companies, all agree that autonomous operation is safe, prudent and, importantly, infallible. Level 2 and Level 3 may be impressive, but right now they are still just tools. Tools that 
help us stay safer on the road, at least as we're told. Although, as we've discussed before on this channel, that's not always as clear cut as automakers would like because of the way Tesla and other automakers allow their systems to only operate on roads that tend towards higher safety scores than lower safety scores. But either way you look at it, they are still tools. They're not chauffeurs yet. And on that note, we are done with today's video. If you liked it, you know what to do and feel free to tip us with a super thanks. The comments are open for your thoughts, as is our Discord chat room. There's a link below. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow the links to become a supporter through a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. You'll also find links to our Ko-fi, Bitcoin and Swag Store and do check us out on Mastodon. We have our very own server just for this channel. Scrolling on my right is the list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters. Mike Weeder, Linda Iris, Sean Tucker, Patrick Boyarski, Paul Nelson, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Mua Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tazla in the Gong, Dan Baer, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Asentar and Jim Burness. Finally, out of this world thanks to our top tier supporters, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burrowbridge, Dave Kitchen, Aaron Hahn, Law Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin and Ian. I or someone else on the team will be back with more videos very soon, but until then, keep evolving.